okay this is going to be you ask a question this one's for you specifically there are a certain number of you that watch these uh predictive videos and i hope this rings home for you i hope you like the video if you do like the video please do like it if you haven't subscribed come on please subscribe and thank you very much for watching I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So what I do with these videos is I'm going to uh, lay out the cards, uh, take four at random, uh, leave them face down, I'm going to reveal them one at a time, and those will be your one, two, three, or four card uh, picks for your question, your concerns, whatever's on your mind. You can pick one, two, three, or all four of them if you want to. And um, and then the, I always recommend that you take some time to kind of uh, relax yourself, get yourself something to drink, really make sure that you're comfortable and you put the thoughts right to the front of your head and hopefully they'll fall into the cards on the side. So, this is the Carrivale vale Visconti 15th Century Tarachi deck. And they're beautiful cards. They're big cards. The uh, container they come in is really um, amazing. And there's a nice little rundown on what the cards are about here because they are, in fact, uh, kind of special. Now, uh, like I said, this is sturdy. The guidebook inside is really good. I mean, it gives you some very good um, uh, history and then, of course, uh, ideas for divination of the cards. And uh, it is in full color also. Uh, and this is by uh, Theory DePaulis and Stuart R. Kaplan, who is uh, from of tarot fame, Stuart R. Kaplan. Now, so good book. The box, like I said, is great. Cards are big. And the deal with the cards is this there's extra cards in this deck you can see that the back of them is pretty distinct and i like noticing the back because from this you can tell whether your cards are going to be upright or inverted okay so right now you can see that with this these two blotches down at the bottom of the of the of the card that you know this is going to be upright and of course if those two blotches were at the top of the card then you'd know well that's the hangman so it's not a good uh, example because he looks uh, wrong then you'll know that it's inverted so Blotches at the top, uh, inverted, blotches at the bottom, the way they should be. Now, the extra cards, because there are 86 cards here, and uh, this is from the 15th century. It's also known as the, the Visconti di Madroni uh, tarot. So let me count these off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And here's why I, I put these cards out ahead of time. The extra cards are these. Um, in the major arcana or the uh, uh, trump cards, the number two of the uh, trump uh, deck is usually the Pope S or the high priestess. But in this deck, it's called charity. And this is how it looks like. So this is charity. So it's the number two of the major arcana. It's usually the Pope or the high priestess or the Pope S rather or the high priestess. And in this one, it's called charity. Now, the number five in this deck, which is typically in other decks, the Pope or the Hierophant. Now, in this deck, it's faith. Okay, and so this is Faith, the number five card. And then the number 17 card, which in other tarot decks is the star card. In this deck, it's Hope. Okay, so you can tell it's a star a little bit if you kind of remember to look up here when you come across this card and it's Hope. Then, in the major, or rather in the uh, pip cards or the, the suit cards, there's, uh, of course, you have Swords, Wands, Pentacles, and Cups. But in this deck, there are, and you know, you have knights and you have pages. But in this deck, you have male and female knights and male and female pages. So in this uh, deck of swords, you have the male of knights and the male, uh, the female of knights. And then you have the uh, male of pages and then the female of pages. Okay, so those are some of the differences in this deck. And so you've got 86 cards to deal with instead of the regular um, the cards that you would otherwise have. Now, to look at them, they're amazing. I've got my cheat sheet up here to tell me what I'm supposed to say about these cards. Um, these, as you can see, they're huge. And some of them are 
you know, not so intuitive. You can tell from looking at them what they are, but others of them are not very intuitive. And so you really kind of need to know your, uh, your system before you start using the cards. And I like to lay them out like this, just so that you get a good idea of what the different cards look like. These cards are actually, let's see, I'm going to tell you what we've got here. They're part of a collection at Yale University at Connecticut's uh, Manuscript uh, Library. And these were painted for the Duke uh, Filippo Visconti before 1447. And so that's all the pertinent information. Interesting cards, kind of big. They can be cumbersome to use, but it's something different. And I, this is kind of the last uh, purchase I've made uh, for cards. And because um, I didn't know, I just like to keep uh, some unusual cards in my scheme of things. Okay, so this will be a four card oracle. So we'll choose four cards, lay them out. You'll pick one, two, three, or four. Get your question or your concerns right to the front of your mind. These cards are huge. And, um, and we'll see if we can't connect for some sort of an answer, some sort of a, an insight into whatever it is that's concerning you right now. I want to make sure I get these wound up really, really well. But first, a little bit of this. Four cards for you. Remember, you can stop this tape. It's probably a good idea to get yourself a glass of water, something to tide you over, and just take some deep breaths. Here we go. Four cards for this oracle. That's one, two, three, and four. Okay. Man, these are huge cards. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, but they'll be ordered in the reverse. So this is one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Remember, you can stop the tape, and uh, if you need to, take a minute to get your thoughts uh, together. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four. Okay, so if you chose card number one, I'm gonna reveal that right now. Okay, this is the Three of Pentacles. This is a yes card. Three of Pentacles is putting something together for public display. Pentacles are value, worth, they can be money, uh, but this is, yeah, this is uh, is cooperation, uh, getting things um, in, in, in partnership with others uh, to make a thing uh, pre presentable. So if you chose number one, this is a yes card, uh, putting things together for public display. Okay, if you chose number two, Two, four, six, eight, ten. This is number ten of Pentacles. Again, Pentacles are value, money. They can be money, uh, worth certainly. And this is uh, generally speaks to generational money or generational value, something that's going to carry on uh, for uh, some time, something that people could look back on and say, oh yeah, this is from that time. So this is Yes Card Oso. Uh, this is the ten of coins, and this is uh, Yes Card generational value. If you chose number three. Okay, this is the death card, and the death card is the end of a cycle. It doesn't mean death usually, uh, almost never, as a matter of fact, but it does mean an end of a cycle. So something is definitely stopping. This is a no card. Something is definitely stopping, and something else will begin after that. So this is a no card. No isn't always a bad answer. Sometimes no is the right answer. Okay, so that's number three. If you chose number four... Then we've got the Tower card. This is also a no card, and this is an end also. It's more of a calamitous uh, interruption. It's uh, a destruction. It's um, an inconvenience. It's an inevitable situation that you will need to uh, repair from, recover from, uh, reorganize from. Okay, so this is a no card. If this is what you chose for whatever your concern is, this means no. Because if you do this, then something's going to have to be uh, repaired or started over after that. So that's a no card, though number four. Turn these over. And then we'll do a six card divination, a dyadic cross with this three of pentacles being the uh, signifier. Okay, so we'll shuffle these up and see what we get. Five extra cards for your situation with this yes card, this three of pentacles. Uh, put it together 
for public display, cooperation with others. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, I'm gonna put these over here to work on that energy. Man, I hope I can get all this in. Okay, so five cards, signifier, three pentacles, um, cooperation. The challenge to that is the chariot. And the chariot speaks to um, really um, something moving along at a rapid pace. So the challenge to the cooperation that's needed to put this thing together is that things are um, uh, moving on. The base of this reading then, with this King of Wands, this King of Wands is telling us that um, the plan is is a big plan. It's an in charge plan, and it can it's something that you can count on. Okay, so this King of Wands is uh, is securing that plan. How do I want to put this in here? I think I'll do it just like that for that pentacle to represent that card there. Okay, the past of this reading then is the uh, King of Pentacles. Okay, so the P King of Pentacles in this case then lends value to this situation and strong value, something you can depend on also. So the King of Pentacles in the past, so we came into this with some sort of uh, strong value. In the sky for this reading is this Queen of Swords. And the Queen, Queen of Swords is uh, telling us that um, this, uh, uh, Swords being truth, uh, justice, rules, and law, the Queen is uh, certainly wielding uh, uh, a significant sword in regard to that truth, justice, rules, and law. And so she is reigning over this decision. This is a feminine energy. This is a a um, nurturing uh, energy uh, over this decision. I tell you, I'm just going to have to stick this queen of wands in here just like that. I think that's pretty good. And then the final outcome for this thing that you're dealing with um, is how many do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The eight of uh, swords. So the Eight of Swords is really um, feeling um, bound by the truth, justice, rules, and law. And what does that mean for us? I'll tell you as soon as we recap. So the Three of Pentacles is the signifier card, and that's uh, putting something together for public display cooperation. Okay, It's challenged by things moving at a rapid pace. It's anchored by this King of Wands. It's a plan, a strong kingly plan. So that's what's anchoring it. But in the past, we came to this with the King of Pentacles, which is a strong kingly worth. In the sky, what's ruling over this is a feminine, queenly uh, energy of, is it wands? Of swords. So of justice, of truth, of this thing being done correctly. Okay, that's what's ruling over this thing. And then the likely outcome with this eight of uh, swords is that uh, when this decision is made, and this is a yes decision, just understand it's going to be surrounded by truth, justice, rules, and law. That's what's going to govern uh, how this moves everything forward after uh, you make that decision. Okay, so that's what we have if you chose number one. Let's get these things incorporated back into here. These are huge cards. Um, I just wish I had a bigger space to work with them. That's the only thing. So if you chose number two, then your signifier is this Ten of Pentacles. This is generational value, okay? Can be generational wealth. So whatever this question is, it's a yes uh, answer and just understand that this is going to lead to something that will be lasting that will be uh, significant and that people can look back on and say oh yeah this is when that happened and that's why this is happening today uh, five cards two three four and five okay I'm gonna put these back over here to deal with that energy and see if we can divine some understanding around this Ten of Pentacles um, generational value. Okay, it's challenged by what? Well, look, I love when the cards repeat. What's the chances that would happen of, uh, I think it's 82 or 86 cards are in this pack. I forget what I said a minute ago. But uh, so th again, this feminine uh, energy, this Queen of Swords is telling us, yeah, there's some definite rules, uh, justice, some truth, some law. There's gonna be some things around this uh, yes question uh, that um, these rules really need to govern how this generational uh, value uh, proceeds in this yes answer. It's uh, uh, anchored by the female page of cups. And you can just see, I hope you can see it on camera, the cup right here. It's a great big tall 
cup that she's holding. It really blends into this uh, beautiful background. But uh, this page, of course, is the female equivalent to the male page. A little gentler. Again, when we have a female energy, we have a more persuasive energy. So she's coming to court with this great big emotional, huge cup of a suggestion, a message. And so this uh, uh, persuasive female um, uh, soothing uh, energy is what brings this question uh, to us. Let's do this like that. The past of this reading then is going to be, oh, how many do we have here? Three, six, eight. So is the eight of cups. And the eight of cups is typically uh, having to walk away from something of emotional value. Cups are emotion, uh, passion. And so this, uh, the reason this happens is that we have some sort of an emotional um, uh, turning away from that brought us into what will be a very worthwhile decision if it's made because it's going to last for quite a long time. In the sky of this reading, then, is a new journey. This is the fool. So this is the, the fool's journey. This is starting something new. And um, so this is beautiful in this reading because whatever we're starting now is lasting. Okay. So let's put the fool right up there. And then the final outcome for this is the Two of Swords and the Swords of Truth, Justice, Rules, Law. The Two of Swords is making a decision. And so, yeah, let's not neglect that. Let's make sure we get this decision under our belt. You may be wary about whether you do it this way or that way. doesn't matter. Th whatever decision you make is going to move this thing forward, and it will be guided by this uh, nurturing uh, energy of this Queen of Swords. So to talk about it again, the uh, Ten of Pentacles is generational value. It's challenged by this Queen of Swords. She's going to govern in a... In a, in a, in a uh, feminine way, uh, how these uh, rules are applied to this thing. The base of this being this female page of cups, she's bringing a, a compassionate, emotional, persuasive uh, message to this. Uh, that's what under underpins this whole decision. In the past of this, with this uh, eight of cups, is uh, understand you may be turning away from some passionate or emotional situation to get into this situation, but it is the beginning of a new journey that is lasting, and you need to make this decision. Don't be too hung up about exactly how you make the decision. It's going to move forward in the way that it was always intended to. Okay. Okay. Now, you chose number three. Okay. This is death. So this is a no card. This is the end of a cycle. Death doesn't usually mean death. It just usually means that this is a definite end and something new is going to take place after this. Okay. This has to happen for something else to begin again. All right, so we shouldn't be uh, worried or scared or or uh, Im impinged by the death card. We should just know that let's accept the inevitable and understand that it's making way for something new to come, uh, almost like uh, the change of the seasons. So we need five cards to finish this divination, and this will be one, this will be two, this is three, this is four, and now we have five. Okay. One day I'll have a great big table to work from and a great big camera to film it all. Okay, so end of a cycle. What's it challenged by? It's challenged by this King of Swords. Okay, whereas we just had the Queen of Swords, which talked, spoke to us of a, a, a more persuasive feminine energy, this King of Swords is kind of going to say, yeah, this is going to be done, and it's going to be done, done this way, no questions asked, okay? So this is this end is challenged by the finality of the decision of this uh, King of Swords. The base of this reading, then, how many do we have here? One, two, three, four, five is the Ten of Swords. And the Ten of Swords um, is uh, the Ten of Swords is a definite end to a thing. Okay, so this just reinforces it, this uh, base of this was predicting that this was going to end, and this um, skeleton, this death card, is telling us is just uh, saying, yeah, it's over now. All right. The past of this reading uh, with this uh, three of swords is a broken heart. It's uh, uh, forlornness. It's feeling loss. Um, and uh, so we whenever something's coming to an end, <coughs> I'm going to say that we're, we're going to anticipate that many times with a feeling of, of loss. In the sky of this reading, with this page of wands, and this is the male page of wands, so this is a very determined message coming to the court about a plan uh, that with a strong suggestion that this uh, could be the way out, but it's not by all, any means uh, the determining factor. So that's in the sky. This is saying, this page of wands is telling us, yeah, this needs to be done, I think. 
And then the uh, final outcome with this four of wands, which is small term, a uh, small uh, scale uh, celebrations. Okay. So understand that when this end comes, uh, it's it's challenged by the finality of the rules, the justice, the truth, and the law. It's underpinned by the four uh, telling that this end was coming. It's uh, preceded uh, by uh, a feeling of loss that's going to accompany that end. Uh, it's uh, guided in the sky by this male page of um, wands who is coming to us with a new plan to take its place. And then with this final um, four of wands, this tells us, okay, that no decision is going to be a celebratory thing in the end. Okay? So that's what we've got there. So the final card, number four, if that's what you chose, signifier is this tower card. So the tower is telling us that there's going to be an interruption here. There's going to be an almost calamitous uh, situation that will need to be cleaned up after, recovered from. Um, but understand, it's not uh, the end, but it's, 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 it's definite, and it's something that will have to be dealt with. Okay, this is a no card, and uh, we're going to take five cards to finish that divination for this uh, number four card, this tower being the signifier. Okay, we have oof, one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, these cards have done all they can for us. And we're right here with this tower card. The challenge to this um, calamitous uh, uh, inconvenience, more than an inconvenience, it'll have to be dealt with, is uh, again this three of uh, wands and uh, the three of wands being long-term planning. I say again, we didn't have three wands before, but the three of wands is long-term planning. So this uh, is gonna is being challenged by perhaps some some order, some plans, some action that uh, we expected was going to take place. The base of this reading then with this queen of wands. This Queen of Wands is telling us this is that supportive, feminine, but determined uh, energy of a plan, of an action that's going to take place. The past of this reading uh, with this Ace of uh, Wands, no, this Ace of Swords, is uh, truth, justice, rules, law. And this is a huge Ace of Swords. So this is telling us this is what uh, we have to abide by. This is what we need to understand brought us into this uh, uh, ending type of situation. And the sky of this reading with this Three of Cups is um, uh, emotional, compassionate celebrations. So let's don't mourn this this potential end or this interruption. Let's understand that there's reason to celebrate eventually in that. And with this male page of swords, so he's bringing a message to the court, a determined message to the court about the truth, justice, rules, law that uh, will uh, be a result of that decision. Okay, and so that's where we at. Where we're at with those cards. I'm gonna put these back into the pack. Well, not really. What I'm gonna do is lay them out here so you can see them one more time and ruminate over your decision. Uh, if it didn't seem to hit home with you right now, just uh, think about this. Uh, it may apply to someone you love or someone close to you. Uh, maybe come back to it later. And if it doesn't apply to you, don't worry about it. That's fine. Uh, they don't always do. We just gotta spend some time together. Listen, like you'll always hear me say, this might not be for you today. If, if nothing rang true, if it just seems like nothing hit home, that's fine. We've got to spend a few minutes together, and that's kind of cool. But what you can do is think about people that who are important to you and that whose might this might apply to, or just come back to it later, uh, depending on whether you looked at this during the beginning of the day or at the end of your day, and see if anything uh, hits home for you. And quite often, that's uh, what happens, really. I'm Mark, my journey through tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by. We'll do it again. Ciao for now. You really make a big difference. Thank you.